I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book, and I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time! It's story time! And I'm kind of sleepy today, so I'm in the mood for a nice, quiet story. I hope you are, too. It's story time! I love story time! And what story are you going to tell us today, Book Girl? I have a great one for you, Clarence, but I need to get something first. What you doing, Book Girl? Well, today's story is about great big hugs. So I needed somebody to hug. Mr. Bear should do just fine. Are you ready, Clarence? Ready! Now, get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Mio. Every night before Mio went to bed, she loved to hug everyone in her family. Mio loved to get hugs. They made her feel warm and safe, and she wanted that feeling to never end. She not only liked when she got hugs, she loved when she gave hugs. So, the next morning, she gave the mailman a hug when he came to the door. Why, thank you, Mio, said the mailman. I think it's going to be a good day. And he walked away whistling a happy tune. And then at school, she gave her friend a hug. Oh, thank you, Mio. Thank you for the hug. <laughs> and she walked away singing a happy song. Later that night, after Mio had hugged everyone in her family, and had finally gone to bed, she sat in her bed thinking about how happy she could make everybody in the world if she could hug everyone. And the more she thought, the sadder she got. Even if I hug everyone in the world, starting really early in the morning and ending really late at night, there's no way I can hug everyone. And then she fell asleep and she began to have a dream. She dreamt that her hands started to grow and grow and grow. They got so long that she couldn't see her hands. They stepped, stretched out and out, out of the house and down the street, across the oceans and the mountains, until finally, finally, they wrapped all the way around the world. Mio squeezed and squeezed, giving everyone the biggest hug of her little life. The next morning, Mia woke up and she remembered her dream. But then she was off to school. And when she got to school, everybody was happy. The teachers were happy. The boys didn't tease the girls. Even the mean boy said, good day, Mio. Had she really done it, thought Mio? Did I really make the world a happier place with my hug? Mio never had the dream again, but that didn't matter. Because from that day on, everyone seemed happier. And that made Mio happier, too. And that was what she wished for in the first place. The end. That was a great story, Booko. I love to get hugs just as much as Mio. Well then, Clarence, I'm going to have to give you a great big <laughs> hug. Oh, Booko, <laughs> thanks for the hug. But it's time to go. That's right, but we will see you next Once Upon a Time in my special book. Hi, I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book, and I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time! It's story time! And it's almost lunchtime, and I am ready to tell a story. But I am getting kind of hungry. Do you have any idea where my lunch is at, Clarence? No, sorry, book girl. Hmm. What about you, mailbox? No, sorry. Huh. Doorbell? Well, I think it might be above me. Check the drawer. Look, look. Okay, thanks, doorbell. Let's have a see. It, it is there. <laughs> And it reminds me of a really good story to tell about a little boy and his lunch. That sounds like a funny story. I like stories about food. Mm, mm, mm. Me too, Clarence. So, get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Diego. Diego had just started school. And one of his favorite things about starting school was...
was that he got to bring his lunch every day. He would look inside, and there it was, another cheese sandwich. Every day a cheese sandwich. He liked the bread, that was okay. He liked the cheese, that was okay. But you put the two together, and well, so he put ketchup on it. Yuck. And then he put relish on it. Yuck. Then he put ketchup, relish, and vinegar on it. Double yuck. Mm-hmm. So Diego decided to never eat another cheese sandwich ever, ever again. And he walked away and went to his classroom. But then his stomach, it started to rumble. And grumble. And bumble. And he thought, I'm hungry. I think I might just have a little bitsy tiny weeny bite of my cheese sandwich. So he went back to the lunchroom, and there was a little girl nibbling away on his sandwich. Why would you want to eat that? said Diego. It's cheese. I like cheese sandwiches. They're way better than the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches I get, said the girl. Peanut butter and jelly? I love peanut butter and jelly, said Diego. And that was that. From that day on, Diego ate peanut butter and jelly, and the little girl ate cheese, and they were both as happy as happy can be. The end. Oh, Clarence, <laughs> talking about all those sandwiches made me really hungry for mine. You want a bite? No thanks, book girl. I like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, but that sure was a great story. Thanks, Clarence. Uh oh, book girl, time to go. But don't worry, guys, because we'll be back. That's right. We will see you next, once upon a time, right here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book, and I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time! It's story time and it's raining outside so i wonder what story i should tell today which one which one hey clarence do you have any ideas for a story today i don't think so book girl but you better think of a story soon because it's story time and i can't wait hmm. someone's at the door maybe they can help hi there hi book girl here's a line Rain, rain, go away, come again another day. Little Johnny wants to play with the rain, rain, go away. Thank you, thank you. You helped me figure out a story for today. Are you ready, Clarence? Ready, book go. Good. So get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there was a little bird named Gilbert. And like all little birds, Gilbert loved to fly and play. And sometimes that meant getting dirty. I think you need to wash your face, Gilbert, said his grandma. Aw, grandma! You see, Gilbert didn't like to wash his face. So, 
When his grandma wasn't looking, he turned on the tap, and off he flew. He flew and he flew, but then he forgot something very important. He forgot to turn off the water. Oh, no! So the water spilled out of the sink and onto the floor, and it started to rise higher and higher. And in the meantime, Gilbert was flying higher and higher, happy as happy can be. So he didn't notice the water. He didn't notice the cows who had to float on their backs. Cows on their backs? That's silly. He didn't notice the dogs who had to flee to the trees. He didn't notice that the water went way past their knees. But he did notice this. Gilbert! That was his grandma. So down, 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 Gilbert flew, and then he noticed it. Where did all this water come from, Grandma? Well, Gilbert, you left the water running when you should have been cleaning your face. And this is what happened. Oh, look, book girl, what's Gilbert going to do? This is the best part, Clarence. You see, Gilbert realized he made a mistake, and he wanted to make it better. So he thought, what can I do? All I can do is fly. And then, because Gilbert thought really hard, he had an idea. He flew way past his grandma. He flew past the clouds up and up until he got to the sun. Mr. Sun, will you help me? Said uh, Gilbert. Of course I will, little one. And help the sun did. He glowed and he shone. He dried up the water until it was gone. The end. You see, Clarence? Gilbert knew he made a mistake, and he figured out a way to make it better. Now that's a happy ending. Well, I'm glad it worked out, but it's time to go. That's right. We will see you next, once upon a time, in my special book. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book, and I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time! It's Story time! I'm so glad it's story time! Me too, book girl! It's my favorite time of the day! Clarence knows it's story time! Doorbell knows it's story time! I think story time is the greatest! It's the greatest time of all! <laughs> Me too! Do you know that it's story time? I knew you did! Just the question though, which one to tell? Which one? Which one? I know! Story stuff! Can you help me with my story today? Sure, book girl. Help yourself. I love story time, too. <laughs> You're tickling. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, story stuff. This is a story about a little girl named Sarah. And I think I want to tell this story over in my story room. This is a place where anything can happen. It's filled with animals and people and imaginary places. And my bed. And it just so happens that today's story is about Sarah and her bed. So, get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Sarah. Sarah had a big imagination, and she loved to crawl under the covers and dream her dreams. One night, she heard a noise. It was a little noise. What was that? thought Sarah. Mm, it's probably nothing, just the wind outside. And she crawled back under the covers. Then she heard it again. That wasn't a little noise. That was a big noise. And she sat and she thought and she listened and she wondered. And you know what happens when you start to think and listen and wonder. That's right. Your imagination runs away with you. And Sarah had a big imagination. So in Sarah's big imagination, that little noise became a big noise and it was coming from underneath her bed. Oh, my, said Sarah's big imagination. 
Oh, my! What's underneath my bed? And she pulled the covers way over her head. And then she heard it. But it wasn't the sound her imagination expected. Meow, said the sound. Meow? That's not the sound of a monster under my bed. That's not the sound of... That's the sound of my kitty cat. Oh, kitty cat. I scared myself because of you. And with that, Sarah and her big imagination and her kitty cat snuggled in bed to dream her dreams. The end. I was scared for a little bit that book oh, That was your imagination, Clarence. Thanks, story stuff. You're welcome, book girl. That's not my imagination, book girl. That means it's gotten to go so soon. But don't worry, guys, because we'll be back. That's right. We will see you at the next Once Upon a Time, right here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. on the biggest couch in the world, the big comfy couch. Ooh. Hi, I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time! It's story time! And I am just bursting to tell today's story. It's a rhyming story. That's when two words sound alike. This is the story about Peter and Paul. One was quite big and the other quite small. Hey, Clarence, you're big. Why don't you be Peter? Sure, book girl. But who could be small? Oh, me. Pick me, book girl. I'm small. Okay, Durbel, you can be Paul. <laughs> so get comfy. Find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. <clears throat> this is a story about Peter and Paul. One was quite big, and the other quite small. I'm big, large, and grand, Peter would say. When you see me coming, get out of my way. I'm small, said Paul. That's what I am. I'm teeny and tiny, not nearly so grand. Now Peter, the big one, was walking one day in his large, rather tall, rather big sort of way. And walking beside him was Paul, who was small. He would run, he would jump, but sometimes he'd fall. You're so tiny, so puny, so short and so squat. Why try to follow when you can't keep up? And there on the ground, little Paul, he did cry. Why am I small? He yelled up to the sky. Because that's what you are, it's what you should be, said a voice calling back past the top of the trees. Who are you? Asked Paul of the voice past the trees. I am a teeny a sprite. Take your pick, if you please. Whatever you call me, it's no matter at all. I'm here because I heard your big cry to be tall. Oh, yes, shouted Paul. Make me tall, oh, yes, please. Make me taller than Peter. Show him not to tease. And with that, the sprite did what his magic could do. Paul started to grow, and he grew, and he grew. I'm bigger, I'm stronger than Peter, said Paul. I'll show him who can play. I'll show him who is small. Now Peter, the tall one, ran from small Paul. Only now, next to Paul, Peter was small. How does it feel to be smaller than me? Said Paul from way past the top of the trees. But the answer he got was not what he thought his brother would say now that he'd been caught. I was mean, it is true, said Peter to Paul. Not because I was big, but because you were small. When I was small, I was once, yes, it's true. I was teeny and tiny, much smaller than you. I got hugs, I could sleep any time of the day. No school, no work, lots of love, lots of play. Don't wish to be big, said Peter to Paul. It's great to be small, it's much better than tall. Paul thought and he thought, then he called to the sprite. Please make me small again. Brother Peter was right. I want to be small. I wish to be me. And like that, Paul shrunk down past the top of the trees. That is the story. It's over. It's true. Just be yourself. Be happy you're you. That was the best rhyming story ever, book girl. <gasps> but that's all the time we have for now. Well, thank you, Clarence, and thank you, Doorbell. <laughs> and
And we will see you at the next Once Upon a Time right here in my special book. Bye-bye. 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 Think hard and then maybe you'll remember. Right. Okay, I think it had something to do with a number. But which one? I know. Let's ask Story Stuff. Hi, Story Stuff. Hello, book girl. Will you help me remember my story today? Well, I could try. Open me up and look inside. <laughs> There's nothing in here. Look harder, book girl. I feel something in here, and it tickles. Okay, here goes nothing. <laughs> oh, wait. I think I see something. Mittens. Hmm. Mittens. That still doesn't help me remember my story. Maybe Mailbox will have something for me. Hi, Mailbox. Do you have something for me? Whoa. Oh. Nope. Nothing's there. I'm stuck. Don't be so sure. I have a delivery. But there was nothing in there just a moment ago. I said I have a delivery. Look again. Okay. Here goes nothing. Whoa. Oh. oh. Careful. Mailbox, it's a little kitten. Mitten, kitten, kitten, mitten. <gasps> I remember, I remember. It's a story about three little kittens and their mittens. So, get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Three little kittens lost their mittens, and they began to cry. Oh, Mother dear, see here, see here, our mittens we have lost. You lost your mittens, you naughty kittens. Now you shall have no pie. Well, no pie for the kittens? For kittens. Don't worry, Clarence, it's not over yet. Three little kittens found their mittens, and they began to sigh. Oh, Mother de dear, see here, see here, our mittens we have found. You found your mittens, you darling kitten. Now you shall have some pie. The end. Oh, I'm so glad I remembered my story. I'm so happy. I'm glad you remembered it too, Book Girl, but it's time to go. Okay. Well, thank you, Clarence, and thank you, Mailbox. And we will see you at the next Once Upon a Time right here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book, and I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time! It's story time! And I think you're going to really like today's story. It has one of my favorite things in it, ice cream. Well, I like ice cream. Me too, Clarence. Hey, Book Girl. Yeah, story stuff? Book Girl, I think I have some things that might help your story. Look inside. Oh, let's have a peek. <laughs> oh, I think I see what you mean, Story Stuff. There's a hot dog, a banana, and an ice cream cone. Thanks, Story Stuff. <laughs> this is a story about a little boy named Nicholas and his trip to the zoo. Clarence, would you like to be the zookeeper? Sure, book girl. Mailbox, would you like to be Mr. Alligator? Well, all right, if you insist. Doorbell, would you like to be monkey? Oh, sure, book girl, that sounds like fun. <laughs> Great. So, get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Nicholas. He loved to go to the zoo. And one day, he ran into the zookeeper, and the zookeeper said, Nicholas, I know how much you love the zoo. Would you like to help me feed the animals? Oh, yes, 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 I would love to help you feed the animal zookeeper. And he gave him a hot dog, a banana, and an ice cream cone. That ice cream cone sure looked good. Nope, thought Nicholas. I am here to feed the animals, and that is what I will do. So he went along his way. Supper time, Nicholas called. And he ran into an alligator. 
Hello, Mr. Alligator. Are you hungry? I have a hot dog, a banana, and an ice cream cone. I eat meat. Give me the hot dog and be quick about it. Okay, Alligator. So he opened his jaw and Nicholas threw in the hot dog and he snapped his shiny teeth shut. Supper time, called Nicholas. And he saw a little monkey in a tree. Hi, little monkey. Would you like a banana or an ice cream cone to eat? The banana, if you please. I live in the trees where the fruit grows. Fruit is what I eat. <laughs> so Nicholas threw the banana up into the tree, and the monkey ate happily. Supper time, called Nicholas again. But that was strange. Nobody answered. Supper time, he called again. Hmm. And then he saw the zookeeper. Zookeeper, zookeeper, I gave the alligator the hot dog because he eats meat. And I gave the monkey the banana because she eats fruit. But what animal eats ice cream? Nicholas, the ice cream is for you for doing such a good job saving the animals. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, zookeeper. And he took a big lick of his ice cream cone, and it tastes better than usual because he really earned it. The end. <laughs> that was fun, book girl. But it's time to go. Oh, well, we will see you next, once upon a time, right here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time. It's story time. And I think you're going to love today's story. It's about a little girl who never knew what time it was. I know what time it is, but girl, it's story time. That's right, Clarence. Hey, and you are perfect to help me out with today's story. Who knows more about time than a clock? <laughs> so every time I say the word clock, I want you to ring your bell. You think you can do that for me? Sure, book girl, that sounds like fun. Great. So get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Chloe. Chloe was a funny little girl because she never, ever knew what time it was. She would go to bed at lunchtime and wanted to play at bedtime. In the wintertime, she would go swimming, and in the summertime, she wore a big, fuzzy coat. One morning... When the school bus came, she was still wearing her pajamas and holding her favorite teddy bear. Chloe, said her mother, don't you know what time it is? And Chloe thought, hmm, no, Mom, I don't know what time it is. So, for her birthday, Chloe was given a clock. Good, Clarence. <laughs> What's that? asked Chloe. That's a clock, said her dad. Every time it rings, it will tell you what time it is. Wow, said Chloe. I love my present. I'm going to take it everywhere I go. When it would ring, Chloe would ask, what time is it? And the clock would say, it's supper time. And for the first time ever, Chloe was ready when supper was ready. Then the clock would ring and Chloe would say, what time it is? And the clock would say, it's bedtime. And sure enough, the stars were twinkling in the sky and the moon was out and it was time for bed. Then one day, Chloe went to school and forgot her clock. Gotcha. And when it was time for lunch, Chloe was ready for lunch. And when it was time to go home, Chloe was ready to go home. And when it was time for bed, Chloe was ready for bed. Wait a minute, thought Chloe. I don't have my clock. And then she realized, I know what time it is. I've learned to tell the time. And she had the end. Clarence, how come you rang the bell? I didn't say clock. Because I know what time it is too, book girl. It's time to go. Oh, no. Well, we will see you the next Once Upon a
upon a time right here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time! It's story time! I'm so glad it's story time! And I have a silly one for you today. It's a funny story called a nursery rhyme. But I need some help first. Hi, story stuff. Do you have something for me today? I sure do, but girl, reach inside, but don't tickle. <laughs> okay, here I go! Oh, I think I do see something! Oh, my! It's a mouse! And an egg. Hmm, an egg and a mouse. I know a nursery rhyme about a mouse. Thanks, story stuff. Mailbox, will you hold this for me? All right. Oh. oh. Clarence, I want to tell a nursery rhyme about my little mouse. Do you think you could help me? Sure, book girl. As long as we have a story to tell, I'd be happy to help. Great. So get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one. <laughs> the mouse ran down, hickory dickory dock. That's such a silly little rhyme. Let's do it again. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one. The mouse ran down, hickory dickory dock. Oh, that's so much fun. Thank you, Clarence. <laughs> and thank you, Mr. Mouse. Rhymes are when two words sound the same. Can you think of a rhyme? Like, what about the word silly? What rhymes with silly? Silly? I know, silly Billy. Billy was silly. Here's another rhyme. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down, whoa, and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. Oh, there's somebody at the door. Let's see who it is. Hi, book girl. Here's a rhyme you'll like. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king horses, all the king men, can put Dumpty together again. Thank you! That was a silly rhyme. And it had an egg in it. And Story Stuff gave me an egg. Oh! Oh, sorry, mailbox. No problem. Oh, careful. Oh. oh. This could be Humpty Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Whoa! All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty back together again. Oh, poor Humpty. Thanks, story stuff. Glad to help, book girl. Sorry about Humpty. Me too. And thank you, mailbox. Well, don't mention it. That's all the time we have for today, book girl. But don't worry, because we'll be back. That's right. We will see you here at the next Once Upon a Time, right here in my special book. That's right. Bye-bye. 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 Hi, I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book, and I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time! It's story time! I'm so glad it's story time. But which story should I tell today? There are so many stories to tell. Which one? Which one? Hey, there's someone at the door. Maybe they'll have an idea of a story I can tell. Hi, book girl. Can you tell me a fairy tale about a princess? That's a great idea. I love telling fairy tales. I'm going to tell a fairy tale about a princess named Lilibel. Clarence, would you like to be the prince from the north? Sure, book girl. Great. Mailbox, would you like to be the prince from the south? Well, no problem. You can be the prince from the east, doorbell. Sure, book girl. <laughs> and story stuff, would you like to be the prince from the west? A prince? That sounds like fun, book girl. Great. And I get to be Princess Lilibel. So, get comfy, find your listening spot, 
and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there was a princess named Lilibel. She lived in a faraway kingdom in a beautiful castle. It was time for Princess Lilibel to get married. So word went out across the kingdom and princes came from far and wide to win her heart. When they arrived, Princess Lilibel stood before them. If we were to have a child, she said, what would you give to it? The prince from the north stood up and said, Princess, if you were to take me to be your husband, I would give our child riches, gold, and jewels. The prince from the south stood up and said, If you were to take me to be your husband, I would give our child great beauty, golden hair, and eyes as blue as the ocean. The prince from the east stood up and said, That's you, Doorbell. Oh, <laughs> if you were to take me as your husband, I would give our child um, great knowledge. Our child would be the smartest child in the whole world. <laughs> The prince from the west was the last to speak. Princess Lilibel stood before him. You have heard what the other princes have said. They have promised wealth and knowledge and beauty. What would you give our child if we had one? And the prince from the west thought for a moment, and then he said, <clears throat> If you were to take me to be your husband, I would give our child the gift of happiness. What is beauty and knowledge and money if there is no happiness? You are very wise, said Princess Lilibel. You shall be my prince. Mm -hmm. Oh, it sucks. <laughs> and they lived happily ever after. The end. Oh, I love telling fairy stories. Thank you so much. But girl, it's time to go. Oh, but that's okay, Clarence, because we will be back. We will see you at the next Once Upon a Time, right here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time. It's story time. I'm so glad it's story time. Hey, Clarence. Hello, book girl. Which story should I tell today? Which one? Which one? Hey, I wonder if Story Stuff has any, any ideas. Hi, Story Stuff. Oh, sorry, book girl. I'm very sleepy today. Oh, well, sleepy or not, we need a story. It's story time. Let's have a look. Nope, doesn't seem to be anything in here. Wait a minute. It's so small, it's easy to miss. Looks like a seed or something. I wonder what it could be. Hmm. Hey, there's someone at the door. Let's see if they have an idea for a story. Hi, book girl. Can you tell us a story about the princess and the pea? What a great idea. Hey, and that's what this is. It's a pea. So come over to my story room for the princess and the pea. Get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there was a prince who lived in a castle. He wanted to get married, but only a princess could marry a prince. And this prince had fallen in love with a servant girl. No son of mine shall ever marry a servant girl, said the queen. But I love her. It is she who I would like to marry, said the prince. And if I can find a way to prove that she is as delicate as a princess, will you let me marry her then? Very well, said the queen, but I will fix the test. And the queen picked the hardest test ever. She took a pea and slipped it underneath the mattress of the servant girl. You are not delicate enough to feel a pea underneath your mattress. Ha! You will never marry my son. <laughs> the next day, the queen called for the servant girl to come and see her, and the prince was there too. You are here because my son wishes to marry you. I wish to marry him too, said the servant girl. He is my true love. And then it happened. The servant girl yawned. <gasps> A big, wide, sleepy head yawned. 
Your Majesty, but I couldn't sleep last night. My bed was so very uncomfortable, and when I looked to find out what was causing my discomfort, I found this. And there was the pea. She has passed the test, said the prince. I will now marry my true love. And he did. The end. Oh, book girl, I really like stories with happy endings. Me too, Clarence. Wasn't that fun? Oh, no, book girl, time to go. Oh, well, that's okay, because we will see you at the next Once Upon a Time, right here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. my special book and I want it to be your special book too so come on in it's story time it's story time I'm so glad it's story time what time is it Clarence it's story time book girl that's right but which story should I tell maybe you have an idea hey there's somebody at the door let's see if they have an idea for today's story Hi, Booko. Can you tell me a story about animals? You bet I can. I have just the story about a big lion walking through the forest. Hey, story stuff, you're a lion. But I'm not very ferocious. That's okay. I think you can help me with today's story. Sure, book girl. Great. So get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there was a big lion walking through the forest. And he stepped on a big, sharp thorn. Roar! He roared, because stepping on a thorn hurts, even if you are the king of the beast. Now, he tried to get it out, but he couldn't. Roar! Then he heard a little voice. You're making a lot of noise. Roar! Who dares speak to me? And out popped a little mouse. It was me speaking to you. You are making a lot of noise. Now the lion was used to being treated like the king of the beasts. Bow down to me and be quiet. I am the king of beasts and could eat you. I will not bow down to you and you will not eat me. This made the lion very angry. And he scooped up the little mouse and as the mouse got almost into his mouth, up to his shiny lion teeth, he yelled, Stop! If you eat me, I will be nothing but a crumb to you. And then I won't be able to get the thorn out of your paw. You? Oh, could you, a little mouse, help me a great big lion? Well, I'm small, it's true. But have you tried to get the thorn out of your paw? And the lion said, Nothing. I thought so. It's a job for somebody small, not somebody big. So if you let me go, I promise I won't run away. But I want you to promise that if I get the thorn out of your paw, that you call me the king of the beast. If you, little mouse, take the thorn from my paw after I could not, you truly would be the king of beasts. So the mouse hippity hopped down to the paw with the thorn in it. And with his little teeth and his little paws, he pulled out the thorn. So, if somebody calls the king of a beast a lion, you can say that the real king of the beast is a teeny tiny mouse. The end. Wow, that was a great story, book girl, but it's time to go. That's okay, because we will see you at the next Once Upon a Time, right here in my special book. Bye-bye. 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 And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time! It's story time! And I hope you're ready for a story, because I am just bursting to tell one. Hey, Clarence. Hey there, book girl. Now, which 
story should I tell? Hmm. Hey, there's someone at the door. Maybe they'll have an idea for today's story. Hi, book girl. I like to eat. Could you tell me a story about yummy, yummy food? I know just the story for you. It's a story about a little girl named Sally who likes to eat a lot, too. Mailbox, would you do me a favor in this story? Very well, if it's not too much trouble. Okay, every time I say the words magic touch, I want you to mail me something to eat. Righto. Great. So, get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Sally. She was little, but she liked to eat a lot. And her favorite thing in the whole wide world to eat was candy. She wondered if what it would be like if everything she touched could turn into candy. So she wished and she wished. She crunched up her nose and closed her eyes and wished harder than any little girl ever had. When she opened her eyes, she wanted to see if the wish worked. So she reached down and picked up a ball. And with her magic touch... Delivery! It turned into a candied apple! Thanks, mailbox! So she knew that everything she would touch from now on would turn into candy. The next morning, though, she woke up and was sleepy. She kind of forgot. So she went into the bathroom and took her toothpaste. And with her magic touch... Delivery! It turned into a candy cane. And her toothpaste turned into syrup. And then with her magic touch... Delivery! Her clothes turned into jelly beans and her hairbrush turned into a chocolate bar. And her magic touch... Delivery! Was turning everything... Uh -oh. She went into the kitchen and her mom went to give her a hug. But Sally jumped back. What's wrong, Sally? Why won't you let me hug you? Asked her mother. Well, I made a wish that everything I touched would turn into candy and it came true. And she realized she'd never be able to hug anyone or pet her dog or do anything except sit alone and eat candy. So she wished and wished and scrunched up her nose and wished that she could take it all back. And the wish worked. She ran into the house and gave everyone a hug. And those hugs felt better than candy ever could. The end. That was a great story, book girl, but it's time to go. That's okay, Clarence, because we will be back at the next Once Upon a Time, right here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. on the biggest couch in the world, the Big Comfy Couch, next. Hi, I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time! It's story time! And I am so glad it's story time. How are you today, Clarence? I'm just fine, book girl. Hey, why don't you tell us a story about the weather? What a great idea! Now, I could tell a story about a rainy day, or a sunny day, or a very cold day. Yippee! But I have an idea. You do, Doorbell? What's your idea? Well, push my nose and find out, but not too hard, please. <laughs> hey, that sounds like the wind. That gives me a great idea for a story. It's a story about a little boy and a very windy day. So can you help me with some wind sounds whenever I need them, Doorbell? Sure, book girl. <laughs> great. So get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there was a little boy named James. Now, when I say little, I don't just mean smaller than me, or smaller than you, or smaller than Clarence. No! James was so small that he lived inside a walnut shell. Besides being just about this small, he was like other little boys. He liked to play, 
and that sometimes meant getting into trouble. So one day, one very windy day, one very windy day... Oh, sorry! He decided he wanted to fly a kite, like the bigger kids in the playground. So, hey, sorry, Stuff, do you have something for me? Sure, book girl, help yourself. That sounds tickled. <laughs> Thanks, Story Stuff. So James decided to build his own tiny weeny kite. And he held onto the string and threw it up into the air. But it fell to the ground like a rock. So he let out more string. And he threw it up into the air and began to run and run as fast as his little legs would run. But still, the kite wouldn't fly. He began to get discouraged, and he decided to walk home. But then, a big gust of wind blew, and the kite went up into the air. And James, not knowing that the wind was coming, was still hanging on. Oh! said James as the kite went higher and higher. Woo! So, if you hear the sound of the wind, remember that it's just tiny little James still hanging on to his kite. The end. Wow, that was a really fun story, Book Girl. Wasn't it, Clarence? But oh. it kind of tired me out. done it without your help. <laughs> Thanks, Book Girl. It was fun. Time to go, Book Girl. Oh, well, that's okay, because we will be back. Isn't that right, Clarence? That's right. We will see you next Once Upon a Time, right here in my special book. Bye-bye. 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 on the biggest couch in the world, the Big Comfy Couch, next. Grasshopper. 
If I wanted to jump across this river, I could do it in one big jump. And that's exactly what he did. Boing! All the way across to the other side. The little ant was puzzled. Well, I don't like this grasshopper picking on me and laughing at me. So, what can I do? How can I get across the river? And he thought and he thought. And then he had an idea. So off the little ant went. You know what he's going to do, Clarence? Maybe he's going to build a bridge or maybe get a boat. That's a good idea. But he does something else. Do you want to find out what it is? Yeah, good girl. Finish the story. Great. So the ant came back with all of his little ant friends. Ha <laughs> ha. What good are your friends, said the grasshopper. They're just as small as you are. But the ant linked hands, and they made a chain all the way across the river. And the ant stepped on their backs to cross to the other side. The end. So the little ant couldn't do it by himself. That's right. He needed his friends to help him. Just like you and Story Stuff helped me tell my stories. Thanks, Clarence, and thanks, Story Stuff. You're welcome, Bookle. But it's time to go. That's okay, because we will see you at the next Once Upon a Time, here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. <laughs> it's story time! It's story time! And I hope you're ready for a story, because I am just bursting to tell one today. But which one should I tell? Hmm. Hey, Book Girl, I think we have a visitor. <gasps> There's someone at the door. Maybe they have an idea. Hi, Book Girl. There's a nursery rhyme about counting. One potato, two potato, three potato, four, five potato, six potato, seven potato, and more. Yay! That was a great rhyme! And it gave me a really good idea for a story. Hey, Doorbell, would you like to play a little girl in today's story? <laughs> yeah, book girl! <laughs> great! So get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Jock. When he learned how to speak, his first word wasn't mommy or daddy. No, his first word was one. One mommy, one daddy. His second word was two. Two hands, two feet, two arms. Can you guess what his third word was? Right, it was three. Three meals a day, three diapers in the morning, and three diapers in the afternoon. Three wheels on a tricycle. That's the spirit, Clarence. Jock counted everything. One, two, three, four drawers. At lunchtime, he counted the noodles in his chicken noodle soup. There are 365 noodles in my chicken noodle soup. One day, Jock went to the beach. It was a beautiful day. The sun was shining and the water was warm. But all Jacques wanted to do was sit down and count the grains of sand. One, two, three, four, five, until along came a little girl. Hello? Hello there. Jacques didn't say anything. He was too busy counting. Hey, why don't you come and play with me? <laughs> hey! Hey! I can't. I'm counting, said Jacques. What for? Because. Well, because why? Now, Jacques was getting annoyed. It was really hard to count when someone was talking to you. Because counting is the most fun ever. More, more fun than swimming or, or playing catch or, or playing with your friends? Counting is more fun than all of those things. And Jacques didn't know what to say to the little girl. He had never tried those things. He was always way too busy counting. Come on, let's play. <laughs> and they did. And Jacques realized that playing was fun, too. And he realized that sometimes when you do one thing too much, you miss out on doing other things. So from that day on, Doc only counted what needed to be counted. The end. Oh, I love that story. It's so much fun to tell. That was a great story, Book Girl. Really fun. And thank you, Doorbell. <laughs> Time to go, Book Girl. Oh, so soon? That's okay, though, because we will be back at the next Once Upon a Time, right here in my special book. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.
possible on the biggest couch in the world, the big comfy couch, next. Because he never had anyone to play with. 
One night, he was outside with his mom and his uncle, and he saw a flash in the sky. What was that? asked Miguel. That, my son, is a shooting star, said his uncle. If you see one and make a wish, it'll come true. That's not a shooting star. That's a meteor. That's just a rock that flies around in outer space, said his mother. The next night, Miguel saw the shooting star again. And he thought, why not try and make a wish? So he wished for a friend to play with. And when he opened his eyes, the shooting star was still there. And it was getting bigger and bigger. And it was coming closer. And it came right outside his window. It was a spaceship. And out hopped a little man. Hello there. I heard your wish from outer space. I need a friend too. Would you like to come on a ride on my spaceship? Yes, said Miguel. I would love to. So he hopped in and off they flew. They flew around the earth and around the moon. They flew up past the stars and back home again. Thank you, Mr. Spaceman. Thank you for making my wish come true. And with a little nod, the spaceman hopped back into his spaceship and zoom, off he flew. Goodbye, Mr. Spaceman, said Miguel. That night, Miguel went to sleep very happy because he knew that sometimes a shooting star was a rock and sometimes it was much, much more. The end. Whoa, that was one of my favorite stories, book girl. But it's time to go. Oh, well, that's okay, because we'll be back for the next Once Upon a Time, right here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time! It's story time! And I hope you're ready for a story, because I am just bursting to tell one. Now, which one should I tell? Hey, I know. I'll check out story stuff. Hi, story stuff. Hello, book girl. Do you have anything for my story today? Sure, take a look. Here I go. <laughs> There's nothing in here. Are you sure? Look closer. Yes, there is definitely nothing to be found. This is the first time this has ever happened to me. What story am I going to tell? Hey, book girl, why don't you tell a story about you? Me? Well, I guess I could do that. Hey, and if I tell a story about me, because you guys are such a part of my life, you could be in it too. <laughs> Yay! So get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. This is a story about me. Once upon a time, there was a girl who loved to make up stories. She would make up stories using nothing but her imagination. A cloud would become a city in the sky. Her bed would become a magic carpet ride to far away places. A little girl could be a princess or a doctor or a circus clown. Hey, when do we come in, book girl? I want to be a part of this story, too. In a minute, Clarence. One day, this girl went to a bookstore to find new and amazing stories to tell. And she came across a very old book. It was called My Special Book. And the moment she picked it up, she knew it was very special. She opened it up and magic spilled out. And it pulled the girl inside to an amazing place where everything was made of stories. There were lots of friends who were just as excited about stories as she was. There was story stuff. <laughs> a friendly lion who was filled with everything you need to make a great story. Glad to help, book girl. There was Doorbell, <laughs> who sometimes got so excited by stories that she couldn't help chiming in. <laughs> Then there's Mailbox, oh, who 
doesn't like to admit it, but likes stories just as much as I do. I don't hear to deliver the mail, nothing more. You love to listen, Mailbox. Admit it. Oh, well. And then, of course, there's Clarence. <laughs> the clock that knows the best time of day is story time. You know it, book girl. And then, the best part of all is that you're here with me. Because after all, a story isn't a story unless there's somebody here to tell it to. The end. That's my story. I hope you liked it. That was a great story, book girl. Thanks, Clarence. But it's time to go. That's okay, because we'll be back with more stories. We'll see you at the next one at Once Upon a Time, right here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. on the biggest couch in the world, the Big Comfy Couch, next. I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time! It's story time! I hope you're ready for a story, because I am just bursting to tell one. Now, which one should I tell? Which one? I know! I'll tell one of my favorite nursery rhymes. You might know this one. If you do, you can play along with me. Clarence, would you like to help? Sure, book go! Great! And story stuff, I need some very important things for today's rhyme. Well, what do you need, book girl? Well, I need a... I don't want to spoil the surprise. I love surprises. <laughs> do you have those things, story stuff? You bet I do, book girl. Great! So get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Hey, diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle. The cow jumped over the moon. That silly, a cow over the moon? It can be silly. It's a nursery rhyme where anything can happen, Mailbox. Hey, diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle. The cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport, and the dish ran away with the spoon. Oh, that's one of my favorites. Did you catch the rhyme? Diddle and fiddle, moon and spoon. Let's do it again.
again. Hey, wait, I thought you wanted us to help, Bookbo. Oh, I got so into my rhyme, I forgot, Clarence. And story stuff, too. Did you get what I need, story stuff? We're all set, Bookbo. Let's have a look. Hey, diddle diddle. The cat. And the fiddle. The cow. Hmm, where's the cow? There she is. The cow. This is where you come in, Clarence. You can be the moon. Oh, goody, I love to pretend. <laughs> the cow jumped over the moon. Whee! The little dog laughed. <laughs> to see such sport. And the dish. Hmm, the dish. I have a delivery. <gasps> Mailbox! This really was a surprise delivery! And the dish ran away with the spoon! La 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 la! The end! <laughs> That's so much fun doing nursery rhymes! And you can make up your own stories at home! Maybe with stuff you have in your bedroom or around the house! Just use your imagination, because that's where all stories come from! It's time to go, book girl. Oh, so soon? But don't worry, because we'll be back. That's right, and thank you for all of your help. <laughs> we will see you at the next Once Upon a Time, right here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You want to watch when you do that? book and I want it to be your special book too so come on in it's story time it's story time I am so glad it's story time now which story should I tell today which one hmm I know I know I'll tell some rhymes you can play along with me rhymes are when two words sound the same like cat and hat or meet and greet. Clarence, do you know what a rhyme is? I think I do, book girl. Okay, so if I were to say run, you might say... Uh, fun? Right! Good, Clarence. <laughs> run, fun. Fun, run. See how they sound the same? That's a rhyme. Hey, book girl, can I play too? Can I? I know what a rhyme is. Come on. <laughs> sure you can, Doorbell. If I were to say sit, you might say... Skyscraper. Sit. Skyscraper. Skyscraper. Sit. Hmm, you see how they don't sound the same, Doorbell? How it's not a rhyme? Oh, I'm so dumb. I can't even play your game. You're not dumb, Doorbell. You are the smartest Doorbell I know. Thanks, book girl. So don't give up. Are you ready to try again? Sure, book girl. I know I can do this. I know you can, too. So if I were to say sit, you might say... Um, hit? Hit, sit, sit, hit. That is a rhyme. Good, Doorbell. Yay! <laughs> so now we're ready to rhyme and tell a story. Are you ready, Clarence? You bet, book girl. Are you ready, Doorbell? Oh, yeah, me too. I'm good at rhymes now. <laughs> you are. And are you ready? Get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Jack, be nimble. Jack, be quick. Jack, jump over the candlestick. Whee! See how those rhyme? Now, I'm going to do it again, and I want you to jump in when you know the word. Ready? Jack, be nimble. Jack, be quick. Jack, jump over the... Candlestick. Whee! Right! Here's another one. Star light, star bright. First star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might have the wish I wish tonight. Now you jump in when you hear a word that rhymes. Star light, 
star. Right. First star I see the night. I wish I may, I wish I might. Have the wish I wish tonight. Right, I heard you yell it out. Now you know what a rhyme is. Oh, rhyming is so much fun. Yeah, it sure is, but it's time to go, book girl. It was fun, but time to run. That's right. We will see you later, alligator. And <laughs> we will see you at the next Once Upon a Time in my special book. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time! It's story time! And I am just bursting to tell one. And you know what? I have the best idea for today's story. Oh, what's wrong, Doorbell? You sound so sad. Well, it's just that I have an idea for a story. And well, if you have an idea for a story, well then, oh, well, I won't get to tell Wait, one second, Doorbell. There's someone at the door. Hi, book girl. I like race cars. Can you tell me a story about race cars? Oh, now we have another idea for the story. I'll never get to tell mine. Oh, you're right, Doorbell. If you have an idea, and I have an idea, and our visitor has an idea, what are we going to do? Hmm. Oh, enough with all this sighing. I have an idea. Oh, no, not another one. No, no, no. I have an idea that will solve this problem of too many ideas. Why don't you each tell a part of a story and make one big story? What a great idea, Mailbox. Thanks. No problem. Now, what was your idea, Doorbell? I want to tell a story about flowers. And I want to tell a story about my grandma. Hey, don't forget about the race cars, but girls. Vroom, vroom. Right, Clarence. So, get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's see what happens. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Michelle. Michelle loved her grandma very much. She loved her so much that she wanted to give her a present. Doorbell? Doorbell. Oh, and there's no person that a grandma likes more than a big bouquet of flowers. So Michelle looked high and low, picking the most beautiful flowers for her grandma. Hey, don't forget about the race cars, but girl, let me finish the story. Great, Clarence. I want to see how the story ends, too. Michelle wanted to get the flowers to her grandmother as fast as she could. So she hopped into a race car and she squirmed around corners and jumped over the hills. Boom, boom. And she went faster and faster and faster. Boom, 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 oh, boom, boom, Clarence, boom. Oh, this is silly. Oh, 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 girl, aren't you forgetting something? What? What am I forgetting? This is a story. It's all about imagination. It could be anything we want. You're right, Clarence. Imagination is where stories come from. What happens next? Well, Michelle screeched to a stop <coughs> in front of her grandmother's house and ran inside to give her the flowers. But because Michelle had been driving so fast, the flowers had blown away in the wind. But you know what happened? Her grandma said she didn't need the flowers because she already had what she really wanted. A granddaughter who cared enough to come and visit. The end! Oh, what a great story! Thanks for your idea, Mailbox. It really worked. Well, just remember, cooperating is a great way to get things done. Oh, no, book girl. I guess it's time to go. That's okay, Clarence, because there'll be lots more I of ideas at our next Once Upon a Time, right here in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Book Girl, and this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time. It's story time and i am just bursting to tell today's story now which one should i tell hmm i have an idea come push my nose see if it gives you an idea too okay doorbell here goes Ooh, that's a hard one i think that sounds like crickets jeepers a story about crickets i'm gonna have to think hard oh 
Oh, there's someone at the door. Maybe they can help me. Hi, book girl. I like to make music. Can you tell a story about someone who likes to make music as much as I do? You bet I can. Thank you. Now, I'm going to need everybody's help. Okay, doorbell? <laughs> I'll help, book girl. <laughs> Great. So get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, a long time ago, before there were people and animals, there were bugs. Lots and lots of bugs. One day, all of the bugs were standing around when along came a bug that they had never seen before. Who are you? Said the ladybug. I am Sam, the new bug. What kind of insect are you? Said the butterfly. I've never seen you before. I am a cricket. A cricket is what I am. And all of the other bugs started to laugh. <laughs> Oh, a cricket? That's the silliest name I ever heard, said the grasshopper. Well, Sam was sad. It was hard to be the new bug, so he tried to make friends by showing off. I can jump, said Sam. I can jump high in the air. And he scrunched himself up and jumped as high as he could. Oh, that's nothing. Watch this. And the grasshopper, who was bigger and stronger, jumped way higher than Sam. Now that's jumping. And they all started to laugh again. <laughs> well, I'm beautiful, said Sam. You're just a black bug. There's nothing beautiful about you. Now this is beautiful. And with that, the butterfly spread her wings and showed off her beautiful colors. <gasps> now Sam was very, very sad. So he did what he always does when he's sad. He sat on a rock and began to sing. What's that wonderful sound? Asked the butterfly. It's beautiful, said the grasshopper. You didn't tell us you could sing. Of course I can sing. Everybody can sing. Well, butterflies can't sing, and grasshoppers can't sing. You sing beautifully. Please, Sam Cricket, sing us another song. So Sam found his place among the other bugs, and he also found out that he was special. And once he knew it, the other bugs knew it too. The end. Well, isn't that a great story? See, everybody's good at something. Oh, I love that story, Book Girl. You're really good at it, but it's time to go. We'll see you at the next Once Upon a Time in my special book. I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time! It's story time! And I can't wait to tell today's story. Now I wonder which one I should tell. I wonder, I wonder. Hey, book girl, why don't you tell a story about that? About what, Clarence? About wondering. Hey, that's a good idea. Stories come from using your imagination, and that means wondering. Hey, Story Stuff, would you like to play along? Sir Bukil, I wonder what I have inside to help you with your story. Well, let's have a look and find out. Hey, there is something in here. I wonder what it could be. Hmm, I wonder what we can find out. I wonder if it makes a noise, Book Girl. It might give us a clue. <laughs> Good idea, Doorbell. Hmm, that didn't work. Hmm. Hey, that's a neat sound. Now we know what it sounds like. I wonder what it could be. Hmm, well, it could be a rope. Or it could be a snake. It could be a whistling snake. <laughs> that's silly, but girl, I like it. I wonder what a whistling snake would do. Hmm. I wonder if we can make up a story about the whistling snake. Oh, that's silly, whistling snake. There's no such thing as whistling snipes. Mailbox, this is a story all about wondering, and that means using your imagination. Now, I wonder what would happen if you helped out with this story. Oh, very well. One day there was a snipe crawling across the grass, but he was not whistling. Okay, your turn. Doorbell? Um, so the snipe came to the end of the road, 
I wonder how to get across to the other side, said the snake. There were cars going by, and the snake knew that it was not safe to cross the road. Okay, my turn. So, along came a, a turtle. I would like to cross the road, said the snake, but it's not safe. What could I do? Do what I do, said the turtle. Just whistle. And up pulled the taxi, and the turtle jumped onto the taxi, and it took him across the road to the other side. The snake liked that idea, so he puckered up and whistled, and sure enough, a taxi pulled up beside him, and he jumped aboard and went across the road to the other side, safe and sound. So, if you're walking along one day, and you happen to hear a whistle, it might not be the bird. It might be our friend, the whistling snake, trying to cross the road. The end. That was a silly story, and it all happened because we were wondering. You can come up with a lot of fun stories when you wonder, book girl. That's right, Clarence. And isn't that right, Mailbox? <laughs> well, actually, I'm wondering what time it is. It's time to go, book girl. That's okay, Clarence. We'll be back at the next Once Upon a Time in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And this is my special book. And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time! It's story time! And I am just bursting to tell today's story. Good morning, Clarence. Good morning, Book Girl. And oh, what a beautiful morning it is. I know what would make it even better, Book Girl. What, Clarence? Come on, Book Girl, it's story time. It's story time. But which story should I tell? Which one? Hey, I know. I'll tell a story about a little boy who likes the morning as much as we do. So get comfy, find your listening spot, and let's have some fun. Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Riza. Every night when the sun went down, Riza went to bed. And every night, Riza got excited because he knew when he woke up in the morning, it would be the start of a brand new day. His favorite thing to do every morning was look out his window and say, Good morning, Mr. Sun. Thank you for giving me another beautiful morning. But Riza was like a lot of other little boys. Sometimes he did things that he knew were wrong. And one night he was behaving badly and his parents were angry with him. So they sent him to bed early. Riza was not happy at all. Ooh, I'll show them. I'll do whatever I want. But very soon, even though he was angry, he got tired because being angry for a long time is really hard work. When I wake up in the morning, it will be the start of a brand new day. Then he fell asleep. Because he had gone to bed early, he woke up early. He woke up so early that it was still dark outside. And when he went to the window to say good morning to the sun, it wasn't there. Oh my, Mr. Sun. Every morning, when I come to the window, you shine through it. But this morning, you're not here. What if you never come back again? What if there is never, ever another morning? Then, Riza remembered last night that he had been a bad boy, and he had an idea. Because his parents were mad at him, maybe the sun was too. And if the sun is mad at me, I have to make it right. So, Riza scrunched up his eyes tightly and said, I'm sorry, Mr. Sun. Please come back. If you come back, I promise I will never, ever do anything bad ever again. And you know what happened next? I bet you do. When Riza opened his eyes, the room seemed brighter. And there, across the trees on the other side of the mountain, the sun was rising, and it shone brighter than it had ever shone before. The end. That was a great story, book girl. Thanks, Clarence, but it's time to go. That's okay. We'll have more stories at the next Once Upon a Time in my special book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm book girl, and this is my special book. 
And I want it to be your special book, too. So come on in. It's story time! It's story time! I'm so glad it's story time! But which story should I tell today? Which one? Which one? Tell a story about flying, book girl. I love stories about flying. <laughs> flying, eh? I don't feel like telling a story about flying, Clarence. Well, why not tell a story about the mail? I always enjoy a good story about the mail. No, Mailbox, I don't feel like telling a story about the mail, either. But, Book Girl, everybody's waiting. I don't feel like telling a story today. Oh, no, Book Girl. I don't feel like telling a story, but I do feel like playing a game. Oh, yay! But I don't have an idea for a game, either. Oh, no. Oh. Hey, Book Girl, answer the door. Maybe they have an idea for a game. I <laughs> hope so, Doorbell. Hi, Book Girl. My favorite color is blue. Can you play a game about colors? You bet we can! I have the perfect game. It's called I Spy With My Little Eye. And the best part about this game is you can play it with all your friends. That sounds like fun. Can I play too, Book Girl? Of course you can, Doorbell. <laughs> Everyone can play. And you can play too. This is how it goes. I spy something with my little eye. And you have to guess what it is by asking questions. So, close your eyes so you don't see what I spy with my little eye. Are they shut? Okay. I spy with my little eye something that is blue. Mm. I spy with my little eye something that is blue. Hmm. I spy with my little eye something that is blue. Okay, I'm ready. You can open your eyes now. Oh, me first, book girl, me first. Okay, Doorbell, go ahead and guess. Um, is it the rainbow? No, Doorbell, but the rainbow does have colors. It has red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. But that's not what I spy with my little eye. Okay, your turn, Clarence. But, book girl, I'm just learning my colors. That's okay, Clarence. It's just a game. Give it your best try. I spy with my little eye something that is blue. I know what it is. It's my bells. My bells are blue. <laughs> your bells are blue, Clarence. And your face is yellow. You're a colorful fellow. <laughs> but that's not what I spy with my little eye. Oh. Now it's your turn. I want you to guess. Are you ready? What do I spy with my little eye? Did I hear you right? Did you say this blue ball? That's right! I spy with my little eye this blue bow. Were you peeking? <laughs> that was a fun game, book girl. But it's time to go! That's okay. The best part of playing games is playing with your friends. And we'll have more games and more stories at the next Once Upon a Time in my special book. Bye-bye! <laughs>